Dear students, dear students, welcome to operating system introduction class. So today we are going to discuss about operating system introduction concepts. This is Dr. K. Praveen Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Information Technology, Kids Varanga. So in this introduction part, we are going to discuss about operating system structure, operating system operations, process management, memory management, storage management, protection and security, what is kernel data structure, computing environment. These are the objectives. So basic concepts of operating system and role of OS, understanding the structure of operating system and various parts of computer system, differentiate dual mode and multi-mode operations of operating system, understanding the concept of different managing functions of operating system, basic concept of different computing environments, and upon completion of this chapter, you will be able to define operating system, identify the basic functionality of operating system, and you are able to explain the knowledge about computer system and different types of storage devices. And you are also able to explore the knowledge of control transition from user mode to kernel mode, and you are able to describe the importance of various management operations of operating system. And you'll also able to explain the knowledge of traditional distributed and cloud computing environments. So before starting this, what is an operating system? Operating system, uh, it is a program that acts an intermediary between the user and the computer hardware perihards, right? So it may be any hardware perihards, and it, it must be between user and hardware perihards, right? So operating system goals, the goals of operating system is, so it is going to execute user programs and uh, make solving users problems easier. And you can also, make the computer system convenient to use with the help of a different softwares and you can use the computer hardware in an efficient manner. Computer system structure. So second objective is computer system structure. So the computer system is divided into four components. Basically, it is divided into four components. One is hardware, operating system, application program, and users. Individually, one by one, we can see. Hardware, you know what are the different hardware parts your system is having. CPU, memory, I.O. devices, input-output devices, central processing unit, the memory where you're going to store all the data. Operating system. So what is operating system? Operating system controls and coordinates. It controls and coordinates use of hardware among various applications and users. Application programs. The third one is application programs. Application program defines the ways in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the user application programs are generally the system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the users. Just like uh, word processors, compilers, web browsers, database systems, video games, they're all called, called as application programs. The last one is the fourth component is users. The so users are generally you and me, we are the users. People, Sometimes a system can be utilized by a machine and other computers. 
So they are called users. So four components of a computer. So what are the four comp components? Computer hardware, operating system, system and application programs. In that application program, generally, oh, and what we have discussed in the last slide, compiler, assembler, text editor, word processor, database systems, some games you may install, your Facebook, your uh, uh, YouTube. So these are all called application programs, Instagram, all these are application programs. So users are directly, uh, they can work on this application programs. This is possible because of your operating system, right? right. Now, coming to the definition of your operating system. So OS is a resource allocator. It manages all the resources and it decides between conflicting requests for efficient and fair resource use. OS is a control program. It controls execution of programs to prevent errors and improper use of computer. Operating system also you can define there is no universally accepted definition. So everyone can give the new definition every time when the research is going on on the operating system, everybody can, can define the new concept. Everything a vendor ship when you order an operating system is a good approximation, but it varies widely when you are going for the custom operating systems. The one program running at all time on the computer is a kernel. So this is common for all the systems. So this program will always, it will run. So everything else either a system program, remaining is a system program, or an application program, system program, or an application program, right? So coming to computer startup. So when you are starting, you are powering on your computer. So bootstrap program is loaded at the power up or reboot. Typically, it is stored in ROM. It is, you already know, read-only memory or electrically programmable read-only memory, generally known as firmware. Firmware. So it, it initializes all aspects of system and loads operating system kernel and starts execution. Operating system organization, how you are going to uh, organize your computer systems. Computer system operations are one or more CPUs, device controllers connect through the common bus providing access to shared memory, concurrent execution of CPU, concurrent executions of CPU, and devices competing for memory cycle, right? So generally there are more than one process is going to execute, then uh, there is competition for memory sharing how to share this memory, that is what happened. So this is a, a memory pool, which is CPU, disk controllers, USB controllers, graphic connectors, everyone will utilize this memory. And these are the disk controllers, input output devices, you can connect a mouse by using USB, keyboard, printer, all by using USBs, and this is a monitor graphics adapter right this is these are all will use memory all right so computer system operations io devices and the cpu can execute concurrently so each device controller is in charge in charge of a particular device type Controllers is going to control the device types. So each device controller has local buffer and a CPU moves data from R2 main memory to local buffers. Local buffer to main memory, main memory to local buffer. That can be done by your CPU, right? Input output is from the device to local buffer to controller. Local buffer of controllers so device controllers inform CPU, device controllers generally inform CPU that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt. 
So coming to the next IO structure. So this uh, uh, whatever the input output devices are there, that structure you are going to discuss here. After IO starts, input output starts, control returns to the user program only upon IO completion. And it will wait instruction idles the CPU until the next interrupt. And it will, uh, there is a wait loop contention for memory access. And at most one IO request is outstanding at a time. At least uh, at most one IO request must be there and no simultaneous IO is processing. After IO starts, after IO starts, control returns to the user program without waiting for IO completion. So system calls, there are two things, system calls and device state is stable. System call requests the operating system to allow the user to wait for IO completion. Then device status table, it contains entry for each IO device indicating its type, address, and state. OS indexes, OS indexes into IO devices table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include interrupt. So whenever you are utilizing one IO device, so your OS is going to make some index, that index, if that particular IO device is busy, so it will give busy signal. Then wait signal will come for the next use. So storage definitions and uh, notations, you know what is storage and uh, uh, storage units. Uh, so, here, yeah, this is the thing we need to remember. So the basic is a, a bit, 8 bits is called uh, a byte. Then, so one kilobyte or one KB is equals to 1024 bytes. And one MB is equals to 1024 square bytes or you can say 1024 KB. 1 MB is equals 1024 KB, 1 GB is equal to 1024 MB, 1 TB is equals to 1024 GB, 1 petabyte is equals to 1024 terabyte, you can say. So these are the uh, units of uh, memory. Next one is storage structure. So main memory, secondary memory, main memory, and secondary memory. There are two storages. And the next one is hard disk. hard disk. So main memory to only large storage media that the CPU can access directly. That is the main memory. So here the accessing will be random access and it is volatile memory. Volatile memory. Secondary storage. The extension of main memory. Extension of then main memory provides large non-volatile. This memory is non-volatile. That is, the storage is fixed. Volatile means which is temporary. When you see, restart your system, the memory will be erased, right? Hard disk. A rigid metal. Hard disk is a rigid metal or glass platter covered with a magnetic recording material that is called as hard disk. And a disk surface is logically divided into different tracks. So generally it will be, this will be placed one CD upon another CD, it will be placed. So this will be uh, divided like tracks and sectors. So it will be like this. So divided into tracks and which are subdivided into sectors. So these are the tracks. This is original CD and these are the tracks and this is subdivided into sectors. So the disk controller determines the disk controller determines the logical interaction logical interaction between the devices and the computer and solid state disk so solid state disk is let me erase this right solid state disk is faster than the hard disk it is faster than the hard disk and it is also non-volatile like your 
hard disk and it is having the various technologies and it is becoming more popular. The general examples are your uh, pen drives. Storage hierarchy. Uh, storage system is organized in this hierarchy, speed, cost, and volatility. So caching. Caching is copying information into faster storage system, main memory can be viewed as a cache for secondary storage. So if this mm -hmm. is the main memory and this is the secondary storage, every time this is a secondary storage and this is your main memory. So this cache will work like a intermediate memory between your secondary memory to main memory. Cache is a small memory and it is very easy to search. Uh, from the ca catch memory, right? So device driver, for each device controller to manage I.O., it provides uniform interface between controller and kernel. This is the storage device hierarchy. Uh, the smallest memory is resistor, then catchy is bigger than resistor, then main memory, solid state disk, hard disk, optical disk, and magnetic tape. So these are the increasing space, increasing space, right? And when you go in this way, you are the small memory, uh, huge memory to small memory, huge memory to small memory, right? So catching, important principle performed at many levels in a computer in a hardware, operating system software like information in use copied from slower to faster storage temporarily and faster storage that is catchy is the faster storage check the first to determine if information is there if it is information is used directly from the catchy because it is very fast if not data copied to the catchy and used there catchy is smaller than storage being cached. Cache management is important design problem and the cache size and replacement policy. So this are the uh, computer system architecture. So how the systems uh, will be. The most uh, uh, systems are used in a, a single uh, general purpose uh, processor. general purpose uh, processor. Most system have special purpose uh, processors as well. So here you, we can discuss the, about this multiprocess. What is multiprocess? Multiprocess systems growing in uh, use and importance. It is also known as parallel systems are tightly coupled systems. Parallel system are tightly coupled systems. The advantage of uh, this uh, multiprocess are increased throughput and economy of scale, increased reliability. These three are the advantage of multiprocessors. And uh, these multiprocessors are two types, asymmetric multiprocessors and symmetric multiprocessors. Asymmetric multiprocessor, each processor is assigned a piece, spe special task. And uh, symmetric multiprocessor, each processor performs all task. Right. So system symmetric uh, multiprocessor uh, architecture. So here, this is the memory. CPU 0, CPU 1, CPU 2. CPU will have resistors and catches. So the next one is uh, clustered systems. So like multiprocessor systems, but multiple systems working together, usually this storage is called storage area network, that is SAN. So it provides high availability service switch, uh, survives failure, and asymmetric clustering is there, which is have one machine in host in, uh, in uh, hard standby mode. The symmetric clustering has multiple nodes, running applications monitoring each other. 
some clusters are for high performance computing that is hpc high uh, performance comp computing application must be written to use parallelization parallelization so some have distributed lock management dlm to avoid conflict operations so this is a storage area network and these systems are interconnected to the storage area network So operating system structures are, one is multi-programming and time sharing. In the multi-programming, it's a batch systems, we can say, and it is needed for efficiency. And single user cannot keep CPU and IO devices busy all the time. For example, if it, systems are in network, if single user is holding all the IO devices, then it, uh, it will send busy signal to the remaining users so that is the drawback of that will be the drawback of your systems so multi-programming organizes uh, these jobs so cpu always has it will be having one task to execute a subset of total jobs in a system kept in memory and one job selected and run via job schedule so one by one jobs will be selected from the job schedule when it has to wait that is for IO uh, signal then OS switch to another job so that user need not to wait to execute all his uh, task. Next one is time sharing. So time sharing is Time sharing is a multitasking operation and it's a logical extension in which CPU switches uh, jobs frequently that user can interact with each job while it is running or creating interactive computing. So this response time must be less than one second and each user has at least one program executing in the memory that is called process. And if several jobs are ready to run at the same time, then CPU scheduling will take uh, this CPU scheduling we will discuss in the unit two. If process don't fit in memory, then we are going to move it, uh, swapping. This swapping concept we will learn in unit three. And uh, this is virtual memory. Virtual memory allows execution of process not completely in the memory. So this is also virtual memory is also one of the uh, best topic of operating system that we are going to learn in completely in unit three. Right. So memory layout for uh, multi-programming systems, operating system uh, operations, interrupted driven, and dual mode. See, in operating system, interrupted driven, that is hardware and software. So interrupt means someone which are uh, stopping your work. So hardware interrupt by one of the devices. So if there are several hardwares, so that hardware usage is interrupted uh, by some other uh, device or some other task, then it is called as hardware interrupt. And software interrupts also like that. Say, for example, if you are copying some data at one, one folder to another folder, the same time, if you are doing some uh, Windows related operation, immediately that uh, copying will be stopped. So that is called as interrupt. So sometimes it is called as a software error or a request for operating system service. That's also come, comes under uh, software interrupt. The different operations are dual mode operations like a user mode and kernel mode you uh, mode bit it provides by hardware and uh, it provides ability to distinguish when the system is running user code and when it is running kernel code so as we have discussed the kernel will run all the time kernel will run some instructions are designated as privileged 
that is more important will be given priority will be given only executable in kernel mode when some privileged instructions will be done executed in kernel mode for example if you are installing uh, some applications in your mobile phone so installing that is most privileged one so that will be installed in your kernel mode that is the reason your system will get slow when you are installing some uh, softwares so system call changes mode to kernel mode and then return to call to reset to a user increasingly cpu supports uh, multi mode operations like virtual machine manager mode for guest virtual machines so transition from user mode to kernel mode here you can see this is user mode and this is kernel mode whenever the mode bit is equals to 1 it is in user mode whenever the mode bit is 0 then it is kernel mode so generally user process is executing when the system calls when you are calling the system call so it will enter into the kernel mode immediately that mode bit will become 0 and it will execute that system call then mode bit will become 1 and return to your system call this is what happened when the transition from user mode to kernel mode All right process management so a process is a program in execution it unit it is a unit of work within the system program is a passive entity and process is an active entity program is a passive entity process is an active entity process needs resource to accomplish its task cpu memory io files these are all uh, comes under resources process termination requires the reclaim of any reusable resources so there are single thread processes and multi thread process this single and multi thread process we will learn in the unit 1 fourth chapter single thread process has one program counter and a multi thread program uh, process have uh, one program counter per each thread each thread so that when you are using multi threaded process the execution will be very faster right so these are the activity process management activities so what are the responsibilities so creating deleting both the user and uh, system process and suspending and resume the process then providing mechanism for process synchronization providing mechanism for process communication communication between run process to another process for dead lock handling dead lock hand dead lock is a uh, very uh, important topic and uh, it's a solve for your operating system which you are going to learn in unit 3 so memory management how you are going to manage your memory so uh, memory management to execute a program all of the instructions must be in memory all are part of the data that is needed by the program must be in memory memory management determines what it is in memory and when that will be divided decided by your memory management so optimizing cpu utilization and computer responses to user memory these are the memory management activities so keeping track of which part which part of memory are currently being used by whom so who are the user is user 1 or user 2 or user 30 or user 100 if the systems are in a lan and deciding which process and data to move in and out of memory allocating and deallocating memory space as needed this is the uh, task of activities of memory management next one is storage management so os uh, uh, provides right os provides a uniform logical view of uh, information storage information storage and abstract physical properties to logical storage is called file each medium is controlled by devices like a disk drive and shape drive and varying properties including 
access speed, capacity, data transfer rate, and access method, either sequential or random methods. So file system management, so how you are going to manage your files. Files are usually, uh, usually organized into the directories, as we already know. Access control, access control in most of the system to determine who can access what, which file can be accessed by which user. So OS activities includes creating and delete files and directories, primitives to manipulate the files and directories, mapping files to the secondary storage, and backing files on stable storage media. So these are the activities of operating system. So mass storage management. Usually disk used to store data that do not fit in main memory are data that must be kept to that long period of time. So generally you will store all the data which we uh, use for the long period of time that will store in your hard disk. So proper management is central importance because you have to give the security for that. So entire speed of computer operation hinges on disk subsystem and its algorithms. So there are some uh, activities of operating system, free space management. So this free space management, storage allocation, disk scheduling, you're all going to study in detail in unit three. So student, this is an introduction, introduction to your operating system. So everything will be covered here. And these topics, these topics we are going to discuss in uh, the coming units in the coming classes. Some storage need to be fast. So tertiary storage include optical storage, magnetic tape, and still must be managed by operating system or applications. So it varies between write once, read many times, and read write. So there is there is a difference. It must have to show some difference. So these are the uh, performance levels. So as we already know, the resistor is uh, very small memory unit area, then cache, then main memory, then solid state disk, then magnetic disk. Generally, the size of uh, resistors is 1 KB, and it is uh, maximum space of 16 MB. Main memory is of 64 GB. Of course, this has increased nowadays for the new generation. Solid state disk is 1 TB, and of course, this is also increased. Magnetic tape disk is up to 10 TB. So implementation technology, this is a custom memory with multiple ports, and this is on-chip or off-chip, and this is CMOS, flash memory, and magnetic tape. So these are the units which you are going to measure your storage levels. So migration of data A from disk to storage, generally how it will be done. So this is the process. So multitasking environment must be carefully used, most relevant value, where it is stored in this hierarchy. So multiprocessor environment must provide catchy coherence in a hard way, such as that all CPUs have most recent value in their Catchy. Generally, if a most recent, frequently uh, one data is used by your main memory, then from hard disk to that will be stored in the main memory, main memory to cache, cache to registers. So that it is, it is very easy to get the data from the uh, register or from the cache. All right, next one is uh, IO subsystems. So one purpose of uh, operating system is to hide peculiarities of hardware devices from user. So IO system is responsible. What is the responsibilities of IO subsystems? So IO subsystem is going to memory management of IO, including buffering, uh, catching, spooling. Spooling means uh, the overlapping of output of one job with input of other jobs. So your IO subsystem is responsible for these things. Uh, not only these general device driver interfaces, drivers for specific hardware devices, these are the responsibilities of your IO subsystem. Right. 
for protection and any mechanism for controlling access of uh, processes or user to resources identified by the operating system this is protection you are giving con some control over to your data security defense of the system against internal or external attacks so it will defend so huge range including denial of service that is dos worms viruses theft uh, theft of services and systems generally first distinguish among users to determine who can do what so we are going to give the priorities for all the uh, devices all the users so user id is then associated with all the files and process that are that user to determine access control and for that there is uh, identification that is group identification uh, will be allowed set user to be defined and control managed then associated with each process file so they it will be divided into set of groups that particular group will be allowed only for to do particular task right so that is uh, privilege escalation it allows user to change the effective id with more rights so read write execution rights will be assigned based on their privileges so kernel data structure so kernel data structure uh, generally it will be it can be stored in a single linked list in a double linked list or in a circular linked list or of course it can be stored by using the binary search tree also so in this kernel data structures we are going to discuss more detail in unit 3 so this is all about uh, chapter 1 that is introduction to operating system thank you all now always for the remaining classes